Gillian White and Alexander Povetkin after one of the most shocking ends uh, to a fight in 2020. They are ready to do it all over again. Tony's with me uh, to talk us through some of the potential points of victory uh, for either fighter. Mm. First of all, remarkable end to a fight that yes. looks to be going one way. Mm. Reiterates the, the danger that even at 41, Alexander Povetkin still poses. Before we do anything, let's just talk through that punch that landed and the kind of the, the, the genius and the setup behind it mm. because it all came off uh, the, the, the jab, dropped onto that front foot, yeah. and then beautifully disguised that left, uh, well, that left uppercut up through the middle. Mm. So just talk me through as you saw that punch. Uh, so uh, Dillian comes in and, and Dillian also comes down onto his lead leg and he loads the left hook. So the right hand that he's thrown, is, he's, come, he's loaded this. Pavekin is in this position, so Dillian's loaded. And Pavekin yeah. didn't go up like this. He, no. com he comes across here. Mm. Mm. So it's like a corkscrew uppercut kind of punch. It comes across and it basically the thing that happens is he lands first. Right. And that's just... The only mistake that Dillian makes, in my opinion, is as he goes into the... Ro as he goes, he goes into like a roll and he's coming out, he looks at the floor. Yeah, and he's quite square as well. He just looks at the floor, mate. And the minute you look at the floor and you you don't see this because you're looking at the floor, you just go to sleep. The next thing is you wake up. And that's the only mistake he made all night. He was on top in the fight. He's one punch away from rendering Pavekin unconscious. Everything is going right for him. And that one lapse of concentration, that one moment... That's all it takes, and it was lights out. It, it's, it was hard for me watching it because he was just urging Dillian to just pick this shot, take your time, but he just gets a little bit too... I can't even say greedy because he doesn't. It's just the fact that he rolls, and that... In this, you should never, ever, mm. in the professional boxing ring, have your face here. When you roll, it should be, and you see it. Now, now if I roll and you do this, now you can still throw that shot of Vekinos, but as I roll, I, I see it. Because, yeah. Yeah, and as I said before to people, if Dillian sees that punch, he, he still goes down, but he gets back up. Right. As he does against Rivas, as he did against Joseph Parker, he gets back up because he sees it coming. But the minute his face is looking down, it's night-night and, and no one gets up from them. It's all about a few of the things Povetkin does well. Uh, he's, he's a brilliant sort of level changer. And yeah. he kind of has to be because of, he's, he's a smaller sure, heavyweight. heavyweight. He doesn't cover ground like he used to, nope. so that is that is to his disadvantage in this mm. fight. We know that at 41, there's no getting away from that. Mm. But he he will often enter low, and yeah. then he will sell you something downstairs, spring back up, and then he'll come over here or he'll come over here. So if you're if you're Dillian White, how hesitant are you going to be in this fight? And is is there a, a sense that he needs to reset his mind because mm. when you've been knocked out that badly against somebody? Mm. But it's going to call. You wouldn't be human if it wasn't going to cause hesitation. Of course, but he's been through it before against Anthony Joshua, yeah. and now he's been through it against Alexander Vek. And Dillian is someone who's never going to change. Let's just be 100% clear on that. Dillian is a fighter at heart, and he will fight your head on. We won't see any change in the way Dillian approaches this fight. I would just hope that he would iron out them tiny little mistakes. And they're only little mistakes, a, a, a small glitch in the programme as he's gone through to that role. If he's looking at him all the way through, that's the only thing I'd change in that display of that fight. As I say, he's on top. He's one punch away from finishing off Povetkin. Povetkin's down twice. The second time was heavy. He gets up, you know, groggy-legged and stuff like that. I just, as I said before, I'd, I'd like to just see a little bit more patience from Dillian. Yep. So where Dillian goes in and he's thinking about nailing him and setting up, just push him back with a jab. Just pop him with a jab. And then when you're coming in for that final finish, Blind them. Always give the opponent something to think about. So I don't care if you want to just put that out in his face. Just, as he's going for the finish, he instead come, of, he, he looks yeah, to come in. Doesn't he looks he? to come in and he looks to go. Dillian likes to come here, go bang, whack the body of the left hook, and then he likes to swing real back with that big left hook. Mm -hmm. Now, if Dillian would have just blinded this guy with the lead hand here, it he, he he stops that entry into the into sort of mid yeah. range. Right. Now, a, a counter to that might be well, Pavekin always likes to go dip and go boom, right hand right. over the top. But if you're at range and Dillian is much bigger than Pavekin and you just do this, you, you, you find your way and you, the right hand's not going to land. Yeah. The right hand will only land if Dillian does something silly and goes here. Yeah, because you've got to take your feet back with you as well. If you're going yes. to manipulate the head with your lead hand, you've got to just take that half step back. As we've seen with Pavekin, he's very good at, at dictating the pace. Not the pace, sorry, the distance. So against David Price, he waited oh. for David to, to, you know, pop that jab out and then but boom, straight away he was just, oh, he would he would make it so low that David, when he's down here, 
David would come and throw the jab and pop him on the forehead. Yeah. And as soon as that hit him on the forehead, whack! Yeah. And it was just quick. Not all of them were heavy punches. They were just to get your attention because all he wants to do is get your attention with this yes. and then load this. Yeah. This is his weapon. The right hand is good, yes, but all the power is in his left hand. He's probably got the same thing as what some fights like Oscar Del Hoya. He's probably a left-handed orthodox fighter. Well, there's quite a few of those transfers. Miguel Cotto, Oscar De La Hoya, yeah. there's a number of them. So I think he's everything goes through this left hand for him. He doesn't have the best jab. He doesn't really use the jab yeah. much. It's just about getting close, getting close, letting, making this get your attention and, and then load this line, and then yeah. dropping off. Yeah. And as I say, he varies his heights really well. He, he makes himself smaller. He comes up tall now and again. And that can be offsetting for a fighter. For Dillian, just use your height and reach. Pop him with the jab. He did not like them down the stairs. No, he Every didn't, time didn't. Dillian went down the stairs, he got a reaction and that's from potentially Brecken. an age thing as well, isn't it? Oh, 100%. You know, 41. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. In the heavyweight division, it's not old, old. You know, it, but you're getting on. It's a fair way. You know, you've got to remember Lennox Lewis, all these fights, they were still competing at this age. Yeah. Uh, so it's not old, old, but, you know, let's be honest, you haven't got that long left. So... Are you thinking that this is this should be a, a Dillian White win if all goes to play? I think Dillian gets the job done as long as he stays switched on and pays him the respect that he deserves back and when he's on that way in for the finish. Because I, I, in the first fight, I predicted Dillian by knockout and I thought in the first six. But, you know, I was one point, sh I was one point short. Yeah. He was very close to being on his way because I've thought Pavekin's done for a while. Now, I've been around Pavekin amateur and professional for 15 years. I've watched him on the circuit. In all them 15 years, I have never once seen him celebrate a victory the way he did in the mm, ring against saying, yeah. Dillian White. He screams, ah, at the win. And that, that is just pure relief because he knew he was done. That's one of that. There's no such thing as a lucky punch in boxing. But though it is, you know, that will be the best punch he'll ever throw in his career, in my opinion. That will be the one punch that saved his career that night. That that doesn't come round twice. No. And I just think, you know, we will see the end of him against Dillian White in this rematch. And Dillian White just paying that little bit more attention to detail in the final bits of the fight, that will be the difference. And I think he gets rid of the perfection. Nice one, Tone. Thanks, mate. Always a pleasure. Cheers.